I pledge allegiance to the flag of Fredonia, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. That is what the Pledge of Allegiance would have been if the United States of America was actually called Fredonia. But surprisingly enough, it was actually a lot closer than many people think to it actually being called Fredonia. My god, what a silly name that would have been. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and if you're a fledgling bunch of young colonies that are owned by the British when you're trying to break away, what do you call yourself? You want to call yourself something which is going to be part of your cultural identity. What do you closely relate with? And if anyone was going to think of anything by an American, I think the name Fredonia is probably the most American thing you can think of. So, by that measure, I am incredibly surprised that they didn't actually go with that name. Of course, we all know that this country would eventually become the United States of America, but its name was chosen for good reason. It wasn't just any old name they pulled out of a hat and decided to stick with it, so before the talk about some other options that came to the table, why was the name the United States picked in the first place? One good starting point for how this came to be is that the colonies used to be called the United Colonies of North America. Thomas Jefferson, of all people, was actually, reportedly, one of the first people to coin the term the United States. And there it is, folks. I said the word. And really, from there, it picked up traction very quickly. It wasn't even just senior officials and politicians using this name. It spread quickly to the actual normal people of the United States. They started referring to themselves as being part of the United States, and that was the start of what would really cement this. The word America came from the phrase that many in Europe referred these lands to a few centuries before, the Americas, named after America Vespucci, an Italian merchant, explorer and navigator. So that's how that piece of the puzzle falls into place. At the end of the Revolutionary War, a peace treaty was signed between the colonies and the British, in which the United States signed the declaration as the United States. This was further affirmed by the Constitution, which was also signed in the same name, which read as follows. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defence, promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. And there it is. That was the name that they went with. It was on paper. It was in black and white. You'd think it would be an open and shut case at that point. But there were many people that weren't too happy by the fact that the country was called the United States and felt that it wasn't appropriate for the struggle that they'd been through and what America truly meant to them. So what were the other options? Many people pointed out that this was a fairly ill-conceived name due to the fact that this was the name for just a single country. One of the most prominent voices was that of Samuel Latham Mitchell, an American physicist and politician who said, quote, it was a great oversight of the Constitution's framers that they did not give the United States a proper name. So, what was the name that he thought that might be more appropriate? It was either Fredonia or Freedom, for short. Deriving from the word freedom, of course it was, they added a more Latin-esque tone to it to make it sound more compelling and official, and I can sort of see the reason behind that, but also it just sounds very silly. The people of Fredonia would have been known as Fredonians or Freeds, an adjective of the word which would have been Friedish. It all sounds a bit strange to me, and I can kind of see why this didn't catch on like some people hoped it would. I can't simply begin to imagine hearing Fredonia on the world stage. It kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. This suggestion wasn't just him in his echo chamber, however, as he managed to convince a number of his own colleagues that this suggestion would have some substance with many other prominent people at the time dismissing the name the United States. Part of the reason was that many people thought that the name the United States was more of a political name rather than anything geographical. Mitchell even managed to convince Jedediah Morse at the time, who was a world-famous geographist and made some of the most important texts and research of that period, in which he even referred to the country as the United States of Freedom, 
a bit middle of the road, but still the idea of an alternate name in the country was starting to seep into the consciousness of some of these people. This would result in a number of maps produced at the time, which would also reflect the usage of the name the United States of Freedom. The idea of going with a name like Freedom was also more beneficial for the continent as a whole, because the United States of America was just one country. However, the word America was referred to normally the continent, North and South America. There's a lot more countries in there than just the United States. The problem was that if the United States of America was going to call itself that, with the collective term being Americans, what about the other denizens of the Americas that don't live in North America, or in particular, don't live in the United States area? Whilst they too are also technically Americans, it just doesn't sound right. So, why not Fredonia? Despite the fact that they tried their very best, somehow people actually managed to turn the idea of using the word Fredonia as a bit of a backhanded insult, as it was used by people who apparently were a little bit too patriotic for their own good. Despite the best efforts of some of the senators at the time, the name didn't really stick, and not many people could get on board with trying to adopt the word Fredonia, and by that point, the word the United States had pretty much stuck, and really from there, any idea of the use of Fredonia fizzled away into the history books, and the word the United States of America stuck forevermore. While the name Fredonia is by far one of the most silly names you could have thought of when deciding to name this place, the name Columbia was also considered quite deeply given the fact that Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas, apparently, even though Leif Erikson had already done that before, and then before that there was already indigenous people living in the Americas, so technically they already were discovered, but, well, that's going down an entirely different rabbit hole, and maybe for another video in the future. If you guys liked that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.